Welcome to this Battleborn educational series. Today we're going to be talking about Battleborn smart batteries featuring Dragonfly Intelligence technology. I'm Stephen Lewis and I own and operate Five Star Nomadic Limited. We're one of the certified dealer installers for Battleborn batteries and we specialize in RV and off-grid solar and lithium based power systems. Today we're coming to you from the brand new 400,000 square foot Dragonfly Energy headquarters where every single Battleborn battery is assembled, packaged, and shipped. Most people are already familiar with the industry leading technology and quality of the Battleborn batteries products, but they also have industry leading customer support in house as well. One of the first things that you'll notice about the new Battleborn smart batteries is that they're a familiar footprint. It's the same case, whether it be the 100 amp hour, the GC2 or the Game Changer 3.0 battery. It is the same battery, just different internals. The smart battery terminology within the lithium battery world is really vague. And unfortunately, a lot of the other brands that have smart batteries really are just simple Bluetooth connections to a phone from the battery. They don't really give you anything other than what your voltages are in your batteries and an estimated state of charge. The first difference with the Battleborn smart batteries is that we have a hub unit that allows us to aggregate every battery in your battery bank into one location so that we can share that user experience within the Battleborn app or to every other device in your system. Being able to aggregate each battery in our system into one location allows us for far better diagnostics of our system overall, as well as any sort of troubleshooting for individual batteries within the bank, checking for balance, checking for optimization, all of those different things help with this, making for a more streamlined user experience when it comes to your power system and your batteries specifically. The idea is that we will use a Zigbee based wireless mesh protocol to mesh every single battery in your system into the hub for a long range, super reliable wireless mesh, then Bluetooth out to your phone or your iPad, wherever your app is based. But we also have future-proofed hardwire communication for protocols such as CAN bus or RS-485 that will allow us integration into other parts of our system. The Dragonfly Intelligence ecosystem really does have sort of a limitless possibility in everything that is laid here in this foundation is giving us the capability to do and add so many features and accessories and options in the future that will make the user experience even better and make things even more streamlined and more foolproof. So while I'm really excited and I hope you're excited too about Dragonfly Intelligence, just know that what we are gonna be showing you guys today is really just the beginning. There's going to be a lot more to come in the future. So the basis of the Dragonfly Intelligence technology in the Battleborn Smart Batteries is the hub unit and aptly named everything hubs through here. The idea is that a Zigbee based wireless mesh protocol is sent from each battery in your system and aggregated into the hub. And from there, we have multiple options. We can either wirelessly communicate through Bluetooth into your mobile device, whether it be uh, an iPad, an iPhone, Android products are coming in the future. You'll notice on the top of the hub is an RJ45 port, which is going to allow us connection to a network, whether it be a switch or a uh, wireless router or anything like that, that will give us capabilities to monitor beyond Bluetooth over the internet. The ultimate goal of this RJ45 port, however, is really to give us the ability to use common communication protocols from other brands of devices in your power system to relay information about the batteries to the rest of the system. One thing to note is that the Battleborn hub is not self-powered. So there is a five volt USB-C port on the bottom. When you purchase the hub unit, it will come with a small little step down power supply that goes from 12 or 24 volts and converts down to USB-C. So all you have to do simply plug it in and walk away. Or if you don't have hardwiring capabilities nearby, you can go 
USB-C to USB-C directly from a port or standard USB to USB-C. The options are limitless. There's tons of adapter cables available online, easy to access, or ultimately you could go from a 120 volt AC wall plug and adapt right to USB-C as well. Considerations for mounting the hub unit from Battleborn, the connection to power, and if we are gonna be using communication output to other devices in our network is more critical than connecting to the batteries. So that's more of a consideration. Where am I gonna have power convenient and where am I gonna be able to wire to the rest of my system? Once you've figured that all out, we have two convenient mounting tabs where you can use two simple screws into wood, into metal, into whatever material you have in that location, you can mount the hub to. So once we've installed the hub unit and wired it and it is powered on, before we commission the system, we have to go to the app store and download the Battleborn Batteries app. So you go to your app store, you're gonna search for Battleborn Batteries. And we are going to download it into our device. Noting right now, Apple is the only supported app that we have. Android devices will be coming soon. So once you've downloaded the app, your next step is going to be log into the app, go to the accounts tab, and you're either going to log into your existing account or you're going to create an account. And under create account, you're just gonna fill in your information and hit sign up and that's it. So once you have signed up for an account or logged into your existing account, your next step is simply to start configuring your system. So now we're gonna go ahead and start configuring our system. In our first example, we're gonna use a single Battleborn battery with no hub integrated in at all. So we go to configuration tab. Then you'll see at the top, we have two options. We have multi-battery system with a hub, single battery system without. We're gonna go to single battery system without a hub. Then we can either use the camera integration to scan the engraved QR code or the sticker QR code that will come with the battery, or we can go and hit view discoverable devices. And you'll see that there's about 12 devices that are available right now. Most of them are the batteries in the RV behind me. One of them is this guy right here. So we are going to find the serial number, select it, and now we wanna complete the system. We're gonna name it, let's just call it my initials. So now we have designed a system and configured it. And once this loads up, we will see information about the battery. So now after you've configured your system, you can always get back to this page from the home page of the app by simply going to the My Systems tab. Once you go here, you'll see the name of your system, click into it, and now here's all your information regarding your battery in your system as configured. So now we're gonna take it up a notch and we're going to go ahead and configure a multi-battery system with a hub unit. As you can see, we have eight of the Game Changer 3.0 intelligence batteries here installed. They're set into two four battery setups, seriesed up to 48 volts. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go to the configure tab. Then we have our multi-battery system with hub. Again, you could scan the QR codes on your batteries, but if you can tell from this video, my QR codes are inaccessible on this setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to view discoverable devices and I'm going to connect to the hub first, which is wired about 10, 12 feet behind us, behind the electronics bay. So I'm gonna to connect to the hub. Then from there, I'm gonna tell it that my desired system voltage, 48 volts is my nominal. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna select 48 volts. Then we're gonna go down and we're gonna say, what is my battery model? I have the BBGC3i. 
and I have eight of them total as our quantity. And now I'm gonna continue with this configuration. After that, again, I could scan, but I can't in this application. So I'm gonna to go to view discoverable devices right here, right here. And as you can see, here are all of my devices. So there's two, four, six, eight. There's a ninth battery. That was the 12 volt, 100 amp hour that we messed with prior. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna highlight each individual battery. Let's go to the second one. Now we're gonna view discoverable again, grab my second battery, view discoverable, grab my third battery, view discoverable, grab the fourth battery, all the way through. until I have all eight batteries in my configuration. Then next, I'm going to press the continue button at the bottom. And now I've already taken note of each of the serial numbers on each battery and I know where they need to go. You just grab them and drop them into each individual bank of four. based on serial number and position. So now these four batteries are these four right here, whereas here, I have these four batteries on the right side. Press complete system setup. It's asking for all sorts of information from the system, from the BMS. And especially with larger battery bank systems, this may take a few minutes. So hang tight, let the app, let the BMSs just kind of do their thing. It's gathering all the information it needs to pair everything up properly. So as you can see, all eight batteries have now populated into this system for our RV. You can go right here and you can change the name of your system if you'd like and you can basically see the overall system parameters, the remaining amp hours. If you were not connected to shore power or solar was not coming in, it would have a remaining time estimate as well. Then you move down to the system voltage. So the bank overall being seriesed up, this is not a 12 volt system, this is a 48 volt system. Then you'll see what current is going into or out of the batteries, positive in, negative out. Then you also have an average temperature of all of the temp sensors in the batteries. At the bottom here, we can go into this system status. If you click into that view button, you'll be able to change and set custom alerts and warnings so that it will basically ping your iPad, your iPhone, whatever you have for your device, and it will notify you if one of those triggers is set. Moving further down, we can see the status of the hub unit itself and all the information regarding the hub. Then at the very bottom, we can look at each individual battery by just clicking in and you can tell, here's your serial number, here's what the battery is in its state of charge, and then all the very specific details of this one battery, both remaining amp hours, battery voltage, the current going into and out of this individual battery, which happens to be the far left one, and also the internal temperature sensor. From there, you can basically slide back and forth to all the different batteries and go into them to see what is going on inside your individual batteries within the bank. The next part of the app that we wanna look at is in the upper right-hand corner, right here in gray text, it says firmware is up to date. So that means the hub is up to date and all of the batteries are up to date. If there was an update to any of the firmware, you would be able to click on this and it would take you to a prompt that would allow you to then update the firmware in all of your hardware. There's three different types of firmware updates. One is the app. So whatever your app store is or Google Play Store would download app updates. But then within the app, you may see a prompt up here that says that you need to update firmware. The hub itself has firmware and then the batteries themselves also have firmware. So you may from time to time see prompts to update any one of those three. 
Other considerations when employing the new Battleborn Smart batteries is that the BMS in the battery will consume approximately 10 milliamps of energy while sending that communication to the hub, and that is a continuous draw. Over time, there will be reductions in that energy consumption, hopefully going from the 10 milliamp range down to under three milliamps, but that is something to consider when talking legacy batteries that don't have that draw moving to the smart batteries that will have that draw. The reporting of the battery parameters from the BMS to the hub happen every five seconds. So there will be somewhat of a lag between a load being drawn from the battery and the app reporting it through the hub, but it's very minimal and it keeps things to where energy consumption is lower in that reporting of data. I wanna thank you guys all for listening in today on the educational series regarding Battleborn's new smart battery systems. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to Battleborn's technical service staff. They're always on hand to answer any pre-sale, system design, technical, or after-sale questions that you may have along the way.